Hi all, I have an absolutely amazing game which may represent an opening novelty of the year candidate. It's a game of the neural network stuff fleas. Um, excuse the pronunciation, I did try and uh, practice that. Uh, so Stoffles or uh, Stoof, <laughs> from now on Stoof is an experimental chess engine by Giancarlo uh, Pasquetto. The evaluation function consists of a set of feature recognizers coupled to a neural network which was trained with an oracle that is uh, the evaluation was entirely automatically learned from watching Grandmaster Games. The results were incorporated into Deep Zeng. Uh, Stoffles played in the uh, IC2 2007, operated by Elk van Wallerberg, and uh, along with the, the relative um, Deep Deep Zeng. Anyway, so here in this game against Scorpion, uh, this is in the TSAC Season 16, League One Round 11. Let's have a look against Scorpion Engine. So we have uh, the opening book is the King's Engine uh, defense given to them. The Fianchetto variation, this was, I believe, a favorite of Mikhail Botvinnik um, and is really quite annoying today. It's very, very popular, the Fianchetto variation, very solid. Uh, we see Knight C3 here, Knight C6, end of book. Uh, myself, I've, I've also had some games I've played C6 recently against both an IM and a GM. I managed to draw with an IM with black, um, just for those interested with C6, just for a moment. Uh, this is a really, really annoying but trendy move because also Hawkins played it against me. And maybe an interesting idea is just to, I know White's going to play E4, but just to play this. So just in case you're interested, that might be a, an interesting way of playing it. But anyway, Knight C6, let's, let's, let's get back to the game. White Castle's Bishop F5. So some key differences here. So the knight's there to be kicked on c6 instead of a pawn. And in fact, Stoffles does tap into that fact with d5. And now uh, this provoking b3, uh, usually you know, players are very cautious about this whole diagonal because of the rook there. To play b3 is looking uh, to create liabilities. In fact, it would create two loose pieces at the same time in one move. And generally, you don't want to create... A ton of loose pieces with each move you play. So guess what Stoffles plays in this position? If I give you five seconds, starting from now. Okay, I think we're we're looking at opening novelty of the year. Uh, B3 is played. It looks like a ridiculous uh, move. Uh, tactically, it looks as though it just loses the exchange outright. Not tonight. Takes D5 by the way, because knight takes d5. Here, there's bishop d2 hitting the loose piece on a5. And actually, it's white that wins a ton of material after bishop takes a5, hitting the queen. And then there's knight takes e7 check, and it's end of game. No, knight e4 seems to be just winning the exchange. So yeah, I thought this was absolutely fascinating. And um, I left stockfish, my stockfish, running to quite a depth actually, more than 25 depth. Uh, so I made a coffee, came back, and it's still full. It had a technical path here, giving White a small edge actually, funny enough, uh, with this position. So Knight takes e4, so the exchange sack, fine. And here, the key move, Knight d4, and it's here, you know, Stockfish thinks just on technical merits alone, let alone some fantasy positional exchange sacrifice, which requires some sort of weird deep intuition. Just from a technical perspective alone, uh, this should actually be okay for white. So it's technically sound, even if you don't want to play the, the more creative way. Uh, so for example, bishop takes e4, uh, bishop h6, this is super sharp. <laughs> bishop b1, shielding the bishop on a1, it's crazy stuff. But uh, apparently white is is going to be uh, okay. This is a an absolutely mad uh, technical line. But to me, this is not that interesting, actually. Okay, white's maybe fine. Anyway, that was at depth 37, and it carries on like that. No, the really interesting point here is revealed. Stoff lives. Uh, stoof, stoof. Let's just say stoof. Just, just actually casually uh, chilled out 
uh, plays bishop takes e4 saying I don't care I'll be the exchange down and it brings back memories actually uh, I, I I remember as a junior I was this this training uh, chess thing chess holiday training <laughs> with Andrew Marty and another great uh, British champion um, uh, okay uh, which I don't remember the name of at the moment but anyway so there was another international master and Andrew Martin I remember King's engine in the symbol I got absolutely hammered uh, with h4 h5 hg and so something like this absolutely hammered because I would also lost my dark square bishop and it seems uh, with the light square bishop here uh, this is more dangerous than usual this pawn chain in instinctively you might think is under more danger than usual uh, because of this you know central bishop hitting it and it can just retreat back so it doesn't have to be on g2 here it can just hit this pawn chain really hard uh, so scorpion uh, plays c5 here so is this a scorpion bites c5 if we look at this position with uh, say b6 then bishop h6 and it leaves white with you know great compensation here actually white's uh, threatening checkmate so can just get back the exchange but maybe even better just blast black's king into oblivion like with this maneuver which as I say reminds me of this horrible attack I was under in this simul game where actually even f5 is going to be handy just killing the rooks if you look at this position one feature the rooks are being completely killed so even though it's technically the exchange down if the rooks really have no scope and they really hate the position that's something I think we need to sort of think about when doing exchange sacks and black's king sort of gets dismantled and in fact you get this is just a bit of analysis but you get a vivid kind of impression that white can actually install very very dangerous pawns and eventually white gets the exchange with a ton of interest two connected possible and totally winning that's just a fictional variation with b6 but it gives an idea of the dangers lurking for black around this pawn chain uh, so um, we have actually uh, c5 being played not b6 and now knight f3 and the bishop goes back to g7 but now h4 yes and it just looks like an amazing concept if this really is the case white does seem to have uh, visually great compensation the bishop without the counterpart uh, the h h pawn attack just to undermine this key pawn chain so king safety is basically on a decline if you looked at this uh, in terms of trending I know we're in the world of trending like Twitter keywords trending would be king safety going down uh, light square pressure going up um, h fault activation of this rook going up there's a lot of trends multiple trends you could consider in this position which transcends what we normally you know think of as, as chess analysis are, are we with neural networks going to have to change our whole method of thinking to be more about what elements are trending you know up or down you know king safety up <laughs> h h rook uh, up you know black's rooks down this this night it's going to take a while to sort of centralize so that's a if that ever is recovering it's you know when is that going to happen so anyway black does try perhaps to to use this night immediately with this aggressive b5 that is a problem piece right now uh b5 if b6 just to give another example h5 this is just fictional analysis king g2 and we can see the trends you know the h h file attack uh, so e4 blasting open the bishop so that trend is also going up light squares are being totally dismantled it seems dark squares are now weaker after the absence of this bishop uh, so white with bishop pair, pair here black's rook still useless white's doing really well there so anyway so b5 very aggressive giving up a pawn but trying to at least say look the knight's useful for pushing through with c4 and the knight ideally might come via c4 to e5 later if allowed uh, so white took that queen d7 and now the bishop drops back and now rook ac8 and there is a case that c4 is on the cards at some point queen c2 we have e6 uh, which also now means okay e4 
black's weakening uh, white on you know the d5 pawn is slightly weaker queen c7 and now there is there is a clear threat of c4 this this knight does seem more justified it's black's trying to keep active and when it plays a retreat move and you might think well, this this is a bit this is a bit poxy this is a bit passive what about this pawn chain what about dismantling this pawn chain you don't want to play this well it's not so urgent now this key pawn on the queen side could be very useful in its own right and d5 can be protected now with a rook on the d file as well more conveniently uh if for example h5 then we see black actually do act uh, is actually using the knight on a5 with c4 so like this and knight e5 and black actually gets a big advantage technically black will be well back in the game just improving that really problem piece uh, but this isn't permitted bishop e2 being able to answer now c4 it, it wasn't played c4 uh, in fact rook f8 was played if c4 is played then b4 shuts the knight out the knight is actually quite shut out uh, here it, I don't know what its prospects are trends are pretty bad for that a4 white has a small edge so um, rook f8 we have bishop e3 bishop d4 so you might think this is interesting black's trying to use that c file uh here and and, and exploit these um potentially loose pieces we have bishop h6 bishop g7 uh it's fascinating flavors of the position here instead of bishop g7 for example just to show you some ideas that rook can't move because of you know, that pin knight takes d4 that's that's clearly impossible what does black actually do here if knight b7 bishop d3 and white's able to sort of um say take on d4 this is not a good scenario if white can take that bishop that's going to be a key defensive bishop uh, around the king and nasty things like that trying to distract the queen white's going to be winning there so say you know black doesn't want to exchange off this bishop and goes back to h8 let's be sensible now uh h5 we get the full blast of uh you know potentially an h file attack here uh so this position uh, if not the h file then e6 is weakened with fg instead of hg and we see that white can actually tap into that sometimes with knight e6 white's getting a big advantage there so the flavors it all kind of favors white basically so bishop g7 uh so i investigated those just to show you what you know the bishop exchange off you think might favor white to get rid of this key dark square defender but it doesn't seem the the, the options didn't seem lucrative so h5 the knight tries to improve itself g takes uh, just for the record technically um knight g5 is is pretty nasty in fact there's a spectacular line after rook takes e2 with check here check and queen takes h5 hitting e2 and f7 so if the rook ever moves there's queen e6 and, and knight e6 i'll just put that on the board for you uh just for those uh wondering uh so it's funny this this line is just quite amusing uh, because here the rooks try to be uh, nudged actually and it, don't, you don't really want to also activate um well there's all sorts of dangers anyway uh technically white's um doing well even taking the rook with the king here so anyway knight b7 we see king g2 king g8 rook h1 so yeah i just think this is innovation of the year this is a raw exchange sack and even with black opening up the e file for one of the rooks the knight hobbling back white still in a really good position here uh, especially with the extra pawn now on the queen side we have bishop c4 cementing uh, things there the d pawns now protected f5 queen c1 trying to get in on dark squares it seems queen f6 if rook f8 just to give a flavor here hg and then rook h6 is actually quite dangerous with the idea of knight h4 so that's stronger than invading with the queen just to hit g6 with the rook this this is really quite strong and then go in with queen g5 dismantle g6 and white's doing really well so uh queen f6 uh we have queen h6 now though now queen h6 queen g7 the queen drops back and now we do have hg and knight g5 uh, rook e7 rook h6 so we do get a similar configuration now knight and rook and queen like this the the, the three amigos there on the diagonal rook c e8 and now g4 and yeah this pawn chain is under scrutiny again um so here uh we have rook g7 
knight e6 white has got big compensation and doesn't mind getting the queens off uh doesn't mind at all because look f5 is now the next victim uh so this is going to be is it going to be another pawn for the exchange uh the king comes up so for the moment f5 lives but here um now it's uh, dropping so two pawns for the exchange uh this looks like very big compensation uh, but let's see what happens so rook f6 rook h6 uh white's got a potential pass pawn over there on the queen side now so this end game transition not to be afraid of uh the knight comes into a key square c6 where it will be victimizing the a7 pawn next uh to try and get connected pass pawns without any resistance basically uh and yeah things are looking pretty bad now for black whoa pardon me uh so um rook b8 knight c6 b7 b8 queening yes yeah, it's, it's all over it's all over bond shouting uh so it carries on a little bit and that's it after king g3 uh yeah quite a massacre so I just think, yeah, this this could represent a, a major opening novelty against the King's Engine Defense. This exchange sack concept, uh, with the H file pressure, the the pressure on the light squares, it does seem uh, that this is an alternative to the way Stockfish technically treats the position. It, it's embraced the ex, the pure exchange sack is is fully embraced. It seems uh, by Stoof for sure. It's it's embraced it's celebrated it's a real long-term positional exchange sack and a great opening novelty perhaps to experiments maybe some super gms or gms or ims anyone uh anyone really wants to try this opening innovation i think it's a very interesting one to check out uh to investigate please let me know what the results of your investigation are i think it seems really promising i a really promising idea so maybe the whole fianchetto variation against the king's engine uh this knight a5 you know painful annoying plan uh this might be a, a nail in the coffin for that kind of knight a5 plan if this whole cheeky b3 with the exchange that really is dangerous and it appears to be quite dangerous on initial analysis okay please let me know and also if you want to play me or other youtubers check out that bitly link so two capital y small v small a five capital m capital b or the link in the description so i'm playing hundreds of you there on on chess world uh so i hope you have great fun playing turns on chess at chess world uh, okay thanks very much